failed. Sorry. Oh no, Berkeley. Did you start streaming already? Yeah, I just. <laughs> oh yikes! So everyone can hear this right now. Everyone right now in the oh. chat, tell Berkeley that you can hear him. This is so unprofessional. Okay, I'm in now. You can start. Ah. They won't even notice. Howdy, 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 all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to another day on Stardew Valley. Tools aren't real edition. I'm Jared. He's Berkeley. We're men with hats. And this time, we have a greenhouse that you can't see because I ran into this cave in a panic. What were you panicking about? Th the connection failed. Oh. But, but yeah. I'm, I'm back now. And look at this beautiful greenhouse. Oh, I'm so excited about the greenhouse. I've been thinking about it all week and all of the snow yams that I want to plant in it. So, a quick point of order. We can't actually get into it yet. We're going to have to blow some things up. Is that right? Yeah. So that's what we did at the end of last stream, but we didn't save that day. So we'll have to just redo what we did. Okay. Then, um, yeah. So just, uh, I think we just needed a couple of cherry bombs to, to get our way through that there door. Or to the door zero tray bombs were needed to get through the door just, uh, <laughs> just a couple to get to it so if you're joining us for the first time we are stardew valley tools and real edition and we're beating the community center without using any tools and we are very very close we have three items left or at least three item types we need a snow yam we need an ape uh not an apricot we need a pomegranate and we need an apple no we need three apples this is a mess i'm so sorry we need three apples, one pomegranate, and one snow yam. And we have everything pretty well set up to get those. We've got a pomegranate tree. We've got an apple tree. So we just need to make it to fall to harvest those things. And as of a week ago, we have a greenhouse and seeds on seeds on seeds. <laughs> uh, winter seeds specifically that we can plant and we'll hopefully get a, uh, get a snow yam out of. So things are things are looking good for us right now and for everyone who's fighting against Big Tool. That's right. Stand united. Um speaking of standing united, Berkeley. I <laughs> this is not at all related to that, but I, my <laughs> mom who has become a big Stardew Valley fan maybe because of the stream, I'm not sure. But Aww. she recently got Crobus to move in with her. And Love that. I was super curious what Krobus would give as like a roommate gift because roommates all provide stuff. Like Maru provides batteries, I think. And who is the lady that provides bombs? Uh, Kent. 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 Oh, no, sorry, Abigail. <laughs> Abigail <laughs> provides bombs. Abigail Kent provides bombs. So like every roommate can provide you with some sort of item. And for Krobus, apparently he provides strange buns and then there's something it's like a lucky meal or something like that i'm not i've never had one so i don't know that what that spicy eel i don't think it's it? a spicy eel. it has something to do with luck um, okay but that the fact that lucky meal and spicy eel rhyme makes me very happy and, well also spicy eel gives you luck so oh I, oh okay sure. well you you would know that. There could I be guess. another one that has luck in the name. I'm not sure. Um, Jared, how are we doing on cherry bombs? We are. And would you say we have six of them? I would say that we are fresh out of cherry bombs. What? Oh, we have seven. Would Never you... mind. I was wrong. Why would you say that to me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're good. We have seven. We're yams. good. Um, as Bobarma said, it's about yam time, and <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Wait, where are the cherry bombs? I just took them. There, okay. I have them now. Okay. Did you want? Uh, do you want to start bombing in the greenhouse? Sure. What I've am got I trying seven to do? Sprinklers. So okay. we just need to till in the greenhouse. Okay. Uh, Megan in the chat says, "Lucky lunch." They're Lucky the lunch. There it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Megan I, in the I, chat. I've we... only got room in my head for one luck-inducing meal that rhymes with spicy eel, and I picked spicy eel. That feels like a Harry Potter thing to me. I don't know. It's obviously it's not. But uh, Felix Felicis is the luck potion, but mm. just, I don't know. Spicy eel just seems like a very British food to me. That sounds like way too much flavor for a British meal. <laughs> okay, good point. If you've ever been to the UK, 
would do you think they would eat spicy eel Let's put it in the chat also it's really bugging me that that didn't um yeah that's a bummer can i can i do it again um i think we're better off doing two new ones if you only have two oh, more bombs good point um but barma is on a roll tonight with the jokes they say bombing in the greenhouse new song by the clash Ooh, yeah I just finished the show Dairy Girls, which is excellent and takes place in Ireland in the uh, during the Troubles. And so a lot of the music is by the Cranberries and similar artists that were singing really uh, like political angry songs at the time and rightly so. So I've been on a been on a kick with that. Um, if you're not familiar with Dairy Girls, but that I forget that that show the title sounds kind of strange. If you haven't heard of it before. <laughs> It's about the town called Derry in, in Ireland. D-E-R-R-Y. D-E-R-R-Y. It's, it, the show is a lot like um, Freaks and Geeks, except it takes place during the Troubles. And it got a conclusion. So if you wow. watched season one of Freaks and Geeks and thought, there should be more than one season of Freaks and Geeks, try Derry Girls. There's more, more than one season. Very cool. And it wraps up. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what do I do now? I did the bombing. Yeah, we planted 27 winter seeds. And when those harvest, we've got 10 more that we can plant uh, just for those keeping score at home. But 27 seeds will almost certainly give us the snow yam. So we might need, not need to do that. Um, yeah, I think this is a good time to talk about what we want to do next after the community center. <sighs> There's more. Are you ready to think about after the community center? We've I... been saying beat this game as synonymous with finish the community center. So, it's, but it's, it's that's not really true now, is it? Big tool never rests. Big and we tool can't never either. rests, and neither do we. So, what are we gonna do next? You might be asking, since I'm leading you to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> we are pleased to announce that after finishing the community center, we are going to work on perfection which we have mentioned a few times but now we're announcing it we're declaring it at this point <laughs> so jared what is perfection well it's an unobtainable ideal that a lot of people have that they have to learn to let go of wow yep that is true but in the game Those are though real facts in the game uh it's completing everything that there is to complete, right? Yeah, it's one hundred percenting the game, as the gamer kids would say. One hundred percenting the game. Yeah. So, on the Stardew Valley wiki, there is a list of what constitutes perfection. Um, oh, Scamble asks if we have the pot making recipe yet. I don't think so. I don't know what that is. Uh. I'm guessing it's something you could put in the greenhouse, maybe to like maximize more room. I don't know. Scamble, tell us tell us more about pot making. Tell us more about pot making, please. Um in the meantime, I'm gonna list the things included in perfection oh. as of one point five. So you need to ship one of every crop and forageable item, which also includes growing one of every uh crop and forageable item. You need to build all the obelisks. So these are very expensive buildings that you can buy from the wizard that let you teleport around the map. So they're very cool, very expensive. It's something like 6 million gold, I think, to get all four obelisks or five obelisks. I don't know how many there are. Five. Um, you need to build the golden clock, which costs like 10 million gold. Wow. <laughs> you need to get the monster slayer hero achievement. So... Um, in the Adventurers Guild, there's lists of different types of monsters and how many of each one you need to kill. Um, so you need to complete all those. You need to get full hearts with all the possible friends. You need to level up all of your skills all the way. You need to find all the star drops, cook every recipe, craft every craftable item, catch every type of fish, including the five legendary fish, and you need to get all the golden walnuts on Ginger Island. Now that last one is going to be impossible without tools. So we might give ourselves a pass on that um, and just get as close as we can with the understanding that uh, that we can't actually do it without tools. Um, 
or maybe we'll get as close as we can. Well, yeah, there's a few things we could do. One other thing we talked about doing was only completing what would have been perfection in 1.4. So, uh, yeah, we, we haven't decided yet, but we're either going to get as close as we can to perfection in 1.5 or complete perfection for 1.4, and those will have a lot of overlap. Um, yeah, any questions, Jared, or the chat? None for me. I'm looking forward to making 10 million gold and spending it on a clock. <laughs> <laughs> so the clock lock should be nice for us. It stops weeds and like detritus from growing on your farm. So we we'll, oh. won't have to worry as much about like clearing a path. That will be extremely helpful. Well, a question for you. Is yeah. there anything... Is, is it worth trying to get to the bottom of the Skull Cavern? There is no bottom to the Skull Cavern. What? It is procedurally generated and keeps going on forever. Wow. Um, I think that you get a star drop for getting to level 100, though. So that, that would be included. Okay. Currently, we have 3 Jade, 28 Quartz, and... How many staircases? We have 39 staircases. So. 39 is a lot. Um, yeah. So we could just like keep saving Jade and till we have 100 and use that to get to level 100 of the Skull Cavern. Okay. Um, or like 80 or something. I don't know. Maybe we should do a few test runs to see like how far we can get. Um, Naturally. The skull cavern without tools is uh is big. Okay, so um sorry, let me catch up on the chat. So Scamble says that um Oh yeah, there's pots that you can plant plants in. So you can put them around the edge of your greenhouse to uh to get more stuff. Um yeah, we should definitely look into that. And um Megan says there's four obelisks. Thank you. Control Alt and Delete says you can't be perfect until you've dated everyone in town. I thought that with the bachelors and bachelorettes you could get to eight hearts with them and have that count for for, for full friendship, but I could be wrong about that. Um, Megan in the chat agrees with me, so that's I'm I'm feeling pretty pretty confident in that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we've still. We don't want to look too far past the mark. We want to enjoy this journey to the community center while we've got it. But uh, also, we've kind of done everything we can for the community center other than wait for uh, for our crops to grow. So I guess we can start working on things. Yeah. Uh, what should we do first? So I think... Um, man, there's just so much. It's kind of overwhelming. Um, so f friendship is something we can work on right now. We can start doing a better job of like talking to everyone every day and, um, giving gifts whenever we have things to give. Okay. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, making money <laughs> so that we can, uh, move towards buying those, those super big obelisks and buildings. Let me look at the list again. Oh, catching every type of fish. Uh, what's your fishing level? Uh, probably not incredible. Let's see here. Uh, ten. So incredible. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of them. All the fishing levels. Jared has mastered fishing. Um, so we could start working on the uh. The legendary fish. We okay. should probably do some research offline, though, about where those are, unless you want to, like, pull up your phone or something and look up how to catch a legendary fish. Yeah. Because they're only at specific locations on the map, and I don't know those off the top of my head. Okay. I, I'm i going to finally upgrade my fishing rod. <laughs> hey, yes, that's a good idea. And I will, I will take a look. Another thing that we could do, well, fishing could help achieve this, mining could help achieve this, but finishing the museum. 
Yes. Yeah, is that not part of perfection? I would Weird. assume it must be. Maybe you get a goal or a star drop from finishing the museum, and so it's included in the star drop one. Hmm. I should have done more research before this announcement, because <laughs> now I feel like we've got a bunch of decisions to make. Um, Willie's not in his shop, but the door's unlocked. Can I just take what I want? I think so, if you can find it. What about the back door? Oh, it's locked. Oh, man. Okay, Megan in the chat has confirmed that uh, you do get a star drop from finishing the museum, so that is part of perfection. And she wants to point out that she has finished perfection. I, she's the only person I know in person who has uh, has completed perfection, so congratulations. Yeah. That's a that's that's a big deal. I think the part that I'm looking forward to the least is having to get to know everybody up to eight hearts. I hate that's, knowing people. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, that that I'm sure it'll be fun, but that just I think the easiest way is going to be to, like, buy a bunch of beer or something and just hand it out to people. Yeah, so I think there's, like, two approaches to getting friendship with people. One is to pick a few people at a time and just focus on giving them their favorite gifts every week until you get to full hearts with them. Mm -hmm. The other one, and you can do a mix of these two strategies, but the other strategy is to just get um, a universally liked gift, like um, any fruit that grows on a tree and give that to everyone um in in the one playthrough where i got full hearts with everyone i did it by just keeping 50 peaches on me at all times and giving them to everyone that i saw until <laughs> eventually i had full hearts with everyone okay that sounds like an, a sustainable strategy that doesn't that require us to spend a ton yeah it's a little bit slower but it takes a lot less mental effort so it's worth it in my opinion Okay, sorry, I need to catch up on the chat again. Oh, legendary fish can only be caught in certain seasons. So there's one per season and then an extra fish. Um, so that is good to know. Yeah, I think we'll have to look those up on, offline and figure out a strategy on the legendary fish. Okay. Um, Scamble and Babarma recommend coffee as a way to get, become friends with everyone, except mm. the kids who hate coffee. <laughs> That's because coffee's for grown-ups. Do the kids hate beer? <laughs> or wine? <laughs> we all know Those kids that love game. to wine. <laughs> Alright, well, while we contemplate all of the options unfolding before us. I just want to talk a little bit about a book that I started reading. Oh yeah, please do. And it, <laughs> I, have to look, I have to look at the cover while I say the name of it. It is called An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. <laughs> and I like to call it a truly remarkable thing, which is wrong <laughs> and embarrassing. But it's yeah, a the, book. the title's a mouthful. It, it is a mouthful, but it's also an accurate description of the book. It reminds me a lot of Ready Player One, but in a parallel universe where, uh, where the mysteries are very much happening in the real world uh, and not a digital. So uh, Ready Player One world. without the core premise of Ready Player One? Yeah, but with a lot of the framework of Ready Player One. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Um, and it's so so the author Hank Green is fairly well known, along with his brother, whose last name is also Green, but I'm forgetting his first name right now. John. John Green, thank you. Um, and because they're famous and because the book talks a little bit or a lot bit about what it's like to be famous in the modern day, 
uh, there's a lot of interesting insights and it, it almost comes off to me as Hank uh, writing about his own life and his own experiences through the lens uh, or through the veneer of a fictional character, um, which I found to be a very fascinating part of the book because there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in media production and in, in creating the content from the famous people that we all know and love, um, that it's easy to forget or ignore or, uh, take for granted. So even just that part of the book, I found fascinating, but the overall mystery, um, is quite interesting. It is very much a sci-fi series. Um, but it is set in plain old regular earth plus mm -hmm. plus sci-fi some sci-fi stuff yeah do you want to just explain the premise yeah so uh the main character whose name is april may which uh i i'm listening to the audiobook so i don't know how her last name is spelled but if both names are just the straight up month i can see how he came to that uh nomenclature they, they are both the straight up month. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she is a not failed art student, but an art student who kind of ended up selling out and, and got into work with a startup, wasn't really doing what they wanted to do. And uh, living in New York, ran into a super cool sculpture that, uh, nobody in New York is really paying attention to because in a city full of all sorts of very interesting and weird art, what's one more piece of interesting and weird art? But uh, things quickly take a turn after she makes a short video with the sculpture and uh, the world changes very quickly after that. And there's, there is a lot of mystery, a little bit of romance and, and interpersonal relationship uh stuff and some like i said before some very poignant remarks about fame and society that i enjoyed does that does that sum it up berkeley this is your favorite yeah. book right now so yeah uh, i thought that was a great summary okay yeah i absolutely love this book um that kind of just like you said i i enjoyed the plot i enjoyed the characters uh but the uh just all the com commentary and insight throughout it about things that were just tangentially related to the story. That, that was what made me fall in love with it. Um, it's got really cool ideas about social media and our relationship with it and fame and our relationship with that and uh, just how relationships can change very quickly as the world is changing quickly. There's lots of cool themes. Yeah. So um, good book. Thanks for the recommendation. And yeah. I never get tired of plugging it. Libby is a free app, free to use, free to download from the Android app store. And I'm assuming that you can get it from uh, Apple's app store as well. And it lets you use your library card. And if you are a member of a participating library that has uh, online stuff, you can read like Kindle books or you can get audiobooks for free. And there's no limit to the number that you could get but it is a hold based system so you can only have five at a time but you could have as many as you can get your hands on in a month if you return uh, what you're reading and get through it so it's a great way to support your library system uh, not give money to Amazon if you're worried about that uh, and also not spend money just in general if you're a college student like me that's helpful Libby check it out can I tell you a story about not giving money to Amazon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One time, this was like uh, four or five years ago, um, I got a box on my front door that had three Kindle Fires in it. So like their hardware device for reading Kindle books. Yeah. And I had not ordered this, but it was addressed to me. Um, and so I thought I should give this back because that's the honest thing to do. So I checked their website and there were no instructions anywhere for giving back a thing you hadn't ordered. I I tried, tried my darndest. I, I think I even like chatted with their AI chatbot <laughs> assistant and yeah, couldn't figure out how to return this thing that I didn't order. So I, the next reasonable thing was to keep it. Um, 
there were three of them and I didn't need three. So I figured to like ease my conscience, I would donate two of them because it was the holidays Hmm. and keep the third one. And I almost did that. (laughs) I I like found the group that I was going to donate them to. Mm -hmm. But I just happened to try to set up the one I was going to keep for myself first. And immediately after trying to set it up, I got like an email or a letter or something saying that uh, the device I was using had been reported stolen wow. and that I uh, should not have it. And they were very stern with me about that. Oh so boy. I'm very glad that I did not donate the other two because that would have been a very sad, sad Christmas morning for someone. Yeah, indeed. Like wow. Did So what was the process after that? Did they come get them from you or? Um, yeah, they gave me instructions on how to ship it back to them which is what I had been looking for in the first place and didn't find. But then by the time they gave it to me, I didn't really want to do that anymore. (laughs) But I did. Well, that's, that's wild. I, I think about that. I, I live in an apartment complex, so we get a lot of mail misdelivered and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far it hasn't been anything exciting, but I'm still hoping for like, you know, some super fancy thing to fall off the back of the truck. Mm-hmm. Someday. Someday. Berkeley, That's I caught good. a super cucumber. And one of the Whoa. things that I know about super cucumbers is that if you can get a fishing pool, what are those called? Farm, a little fish farm with a bunch of them in it, sometimes it'll give you iridium. So Ooh. I propose to save this one in one of the chests. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it takes to get a fishing pond, but I can check the wiki real fast. Yeah, I don't know either. It might be unobtainable. I highly doubt that. Um, okay, you need 200 stone, 5 seaweed, and 5 green algae. Oh, so okay. So if you want to spend tomorrow fishing and try to get some seaweed and green algae, I think we could uh, could get a fish fish pond. Yeah, Awesome. Ooh, I got a letter. Noise. Jared, I need truffle oil. Don't ask me why. Mayor Lewis. Gosh dang it, man. Come on, Mayor Lewis. You know who would be good at getting Mayor Lewis truffle oil is his girlfriend who likes animals. Mm-hmm. And I think you should be asking her these kinds of questions and mm-hmm. not us. That mooch. All right, it's Sunday. Uh, should I go to the desert with some jade? Is sure. That yeah, how much jade do we have? Uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should save up. I'll go fishing. Okay. Um, yeah, unless there's something else you'd rather do. No, I, I like fishing. In real life, fishing can be cold and wet and hungry. But mm-hmm. in the video game, it's like a little mini game. They tell. Well, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. You could, you could make it cold and wet and hungry if you just didn't eat dinner first and played outside. That's true. Or like sweated a ton and then sat down to mm. stream. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we like to do. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? <laughs> Speaking of Berkeley um, preparing for the stream, you had some trivia and it was of something that I have everybody on the internet has heard of but very few have actually participated in and we debated about whether we had participated in it Um, yeah can you run me through that yeah so we've been doing stardew valley trivia for the last uh four ish three or four streams um i did not have time to prepare stardew valley trivia for today we will come back to that Uh, instead today i've got some fanfiction.net trivia so fanfiction.net is one of the oldest uh, sites on the internet where people could post their fan fiction. It's, I believe it was founded in the 90s, like 1998, and has been running ever since. So good for them. But that's momentous. Um, can we... Sorry. I yeah. might have been just about to say this, but like, what makes fan fiction fan fiction? What is it? So it's stories that people write about other media. So, um, yeah, it's just a... I was going to try to like reiterate that in a different way, but I don't know how else to say that. 
stories that people write about other media. So you might watch Harry Potter and think, oh, that scene was dumb. I wish it could have been this way. Wait a second, I could write it that way, and then I could share it with my friends. And that's what fan fiction is. Um, is that a good working definition? Yeah, so you, you guys might remember a few years ago, there was a really popular chapter of Harry Potter that had been written by an AI. That's basically... Mm -hmm what fan fiction is except minus the AI part. Yeah. I mean, I would argue that the important part is not the end product, but like the process of writing it and sharing it with people. Um, it's the fan fiction community is very social, uh, mm. compared to other places on the internet. So, mm -hmm. um, even though like the writing is the same, I, I would argue that they're the, uh, the sharing and the community is a f critical component of that too. Yeah. Okay. Just before we get a bunch of messages saying that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that we're fake fans, that, that we're fake fans of fan fiction, fictional fans of fan fiction, you might say. <laughs> um. So yeah, fanfiction.net. They've got um just hundreds of thousands, probably at least tens of thousands of stories that people have posted based on their favorite media. And this first round of questions is. Uh, which media people choose to write about when they're writing fan fiction. So I've got four different categories, and we can choose to do one or two of them, depending on uh, how, how interesting this ends up being. Okay. So categories are video games, movies, books, and uh, live-action TV shows. Um, oh, and man. The, wow. I'll have you guess what... Uh, what pieces of media in those categories people are writing about. Okay. And I've got the top 10 lists. So if you find something in the top 10, uh, you'll get a, get a point. Okay. Points don't do anything though. That's okay. That's, that's just like normal life. Um, <laughs> slash rewards points at any grocery store. Um, okay. Well, let's start with books. Okay. All right, Jared, what books do you think people are writing fan fiction about on fanfiction.net? Oh, sorry, I should point one other thing. I think that AO3 is a more popular website today for fan fiction. Um, so I apologize that I'm using this older uh, older site. So just skew, skew your answers towards 2010. <laughs> okay, well, with that in mind, Harry Potter has to be in the top 10. Number one. Oh my goodness. 844,000 stories have been written about <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Do you know how long like the average story is? Is it like a chapter or like a, like one conversation? What's the, I don't know on average. Um, I've, I've definitely seen some that are like someone just outlined their plan for a fan fiction and then promised to come back to it and actually write it and didn't. <laughs> um, there's also some that, well, I'll just share this tidbit now. Fanfiction.net has a Super Mario Bros. fanfiction that is 4 million <laughs> words long. 4 million <laughs> words long. What? Is, is and, it just, it's a me, a Mario, again and again and again? <laughs> no, it got, like, attention in the news for really? being one of the longest pieces of literature ever written in English. Wow. It's, it's yeah, it's legit. Okay. Um, so, yes, it runs the full spectrum between as short as you could possibly imagine and longer than you could possibly imagine. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So Harry Potter, number one. Um, Harry Potter, number one. Yes. Congratulations. In the chat, we got a vote for Dune. That was oh. a good guess, but not in the top ten. You know, okay. I don't know if I qualify as a real Dune fan. I don't know what the gatekeeping is like in the Dune community. I'm a big fan of the of the first book of Dune, and I'm a big fan of the movie that they made recently. But just from the sound of it, it sounds like the books kind of go off the rails a little bit as the series goes on. So I could personally see fan fiction being valuable to me. Like, like bring it back on track? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, sorry, that just, uh, that brought that back to me. So Dune and what, what else was said? Um, I, I think that was, uh, we've got a guess for Star Wars. Oh, um, yeah. So right now we're just in the book category and Star Wars books did not make it onto the list. Probably because there's good money to be made in just publishing your Star Wars fan fiction and not calling it fan fiction. 
<laughs> I mean, there's like so many spinoff series, right? By so many authors. I am I the only Star Wars books I read were like a YA like Padawan novel series, and I don't remember a lot of the details. Mm. But uh, yeah, I I have heard that there are a bunch of different literary offerings to be had in the Star Wars universe. Um, I would say for myself, probably the Twilight series is a pretty popular IP that started as books, wow. so I could see that being a fan fiction that's popular. Jared, you are so good at this game. That is number two with <laughs> 222,000 stories, um, including uh, Fifty Shades of Grey started as a Twilight fan fiction. Oh, I don't really? think it was on fanfiction.net, but that was the original uh, premise. Yeah. Wow. So did, did, what, did Edward Cullen make it into the film? Um, well, they like changed all the names so that it wouldn't be about Twilight anymore oh, once man. they realized that they had something marketable. <laughs> okay. Um, Control and Delete in the chat says that the best fan fiction he ever read was a full book-length Harry Potter book called Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. Mm. Sounds intriguing. I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. Um, full, full-length full Harry Potter book, though. And Scamble says if you like Dune, you should try Brigadoon. I don't know if that's just a pun or if it's an actual recommendation. It's probably, it's like Dune, but everything's in pirate speech. It's just Brigger. Yar, the spice must flow. <laughs> Yar, they're the mind killer bee. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, well, so you say that I'm good, but those are the, like the top two uh, intellectual properties that I could think of that, that people would write fan fiction about. And it's going to be harder from here on out because I have read a lot of books, but I haven't read a lot of super popular books. Um, so I think that that kind of limits me as far as this goes, but, uh, hunger games would be another guess, especially for that era of popularity. Yep. Number five. Hunger Games with 46.2 thousand. All right. Not bad. Nice. Um, wait, how many? Tell me, tell me when you're not having fun. Tell me when you're not having fun guessing anymore. Oh, no. I'm having fun. I'm just, so, so the number one slot was 850,000 roughly. Number yes. two had 220,000 roughly. Yes. Number five had how many? 46,000. So it, it drops off pretty fast. There. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting to me. Um, what else could be up there? Oh, man. Okay, a lot of people are into, like, I don't know if Victorian is the right word to describe it, but, you know, like, Pride and Prejudice, Little Women, like, you have mm. kind of these romantic novels about kind of colonial era England. So I would guess maybe Pride and Prejudice would be an IP that has a decent amount of fan fiction. Is that top 10, though? I'm not sure. Yeah, good guess. That is not top 10. I remember seeing it, though, in like the top 30-ish. Okay. I think. Um, sorry, checking up on the chat. We've got Hunger Games, Control and Delete guessed. Uh, there was a little lag, so I'm not sure who guessed it first. Um he also says Lord of the Rings. Ding, ding, oh, ding, ding. That is number four. I should have thought of that. I've been rereading those too. So good. Always good. That one is famous from what I've heard. It's famous for self-insert fan fiction where you tell mostly the same story except you make yourself the author, one of the characters. So just like <laughs> stick yourself in the fellowship. I just love that. That's so, so cute. Is it cute or is it extremely bold and presumptuous to think that you could stand with the fellowship i think that that's just a really healthy self-image <laughs> I, I don't think we need to just be constantly doubting ourselves jared strong disagree <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i guess it is fantasy for a reason cyber surfer has guessed downton abbey another great guess i remember seeing that on the top like 30 ish but uh that did not make top 10. Um, should they, I give the rest of the list now? Uh, or do you want? I, I just had a thought. Narnia, maybe? Narnia. Um, if I remember that, that's number 11. So it just <laughs> no. barely did not make the screenshot that I took. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's hear it then. I think I'm out of ideas. Okay. Other main one we missed was Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I read a lot I'm of not those. 
sure if that counts the other Rick Riordan series, but uh, that is number four. Um, number six is Warrior Cats. Do you remember those books? Not at all. I remember Laser My... Cats, the popular SNL skit. <laughs> My wife always makes fun of me, but I loved the warrior cat books when I was in elementary school. It's just about this house cat that like goes into the woods and becomes a wild cat. And they've got like a whole society out there. And then there's just so many books about it and so many fan fictions about it. Wow. Um, so well, that's why? our top. Why? Yeah. Like I've never heard of that before. Was it popular when you went yeah, to elementary it was, school? It was fairly popular. Dang. Um, I think... Yeah, we can get into this later because I think this is a whole big discussion topic. But um, I think that like what is popular and what gets fan fiction written about it are correlated, but not like exactly the same. Okay. I think there's attributes about books and movies that make them well well suited for fan fiction. Okay. Beyond just their popularity, and I think Warriors hit that sweet spot. Um, just to round out the rest of this top ten list, so we've got Mortal Instruments, which I'm not familiar with, Maximum Ride, The mm -hmm. Hobbit. Mm -hmm. And Phantom of the Opera, strangely. I wonder if that's mostly based on the musical, but they just like stuck it in the book category. Because um, <laughs> I've read the book, but I don't know anyone else who's read the book. Yeah, I haven't. Just, like, And I haven't seen the musical, so what am I doing? Wasting my time. I haven't seen the musical either, but I did dress up for, for Halloween as, as the Phantom one time. Oh, cool. That sounds like an awesome costume. Um, oh, sorry, I missed that. We got some other good guesses in the in the chat. Animorphs, Goosebumps, oh, and Animorphs. a series of unfortunate events. All all Dang. great guesses. I remember Animorphs. That was like three hundred books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of those. I never read one, but I spent a lot of time staring at the covers in the library. Yeah, they were cool. Cool art. Yeah. And I just want to give a sh an honorable mention to a very surprising subject of a lot of fan fiction with 4.2 thousand stories the bible wow there's just thousands of people writing writing fan fiction about the bible which i there's a lot of characters there's a lot of underdeveloped plot lines in my opinion lot, lots of <laughs> material to work with so uh Dang. well you could argue that that some like fan fiction actually made it into canon if you're th talking about the book of job there's debate as to whether job was a real dude or not oh interesting i did not know that and now yeah you just you gotta know. be careful writing uh writing bible fan fiction <laughs> start a religion on accident <laughs> um or maybe you're uh what is it paradise lost that's the original fan fiction and it was about the bible so <laughs> there there you go Actually, I don't know what was first, um, Dante's Inferno or Paradise Lost. I think those both are good contenders for first ever. Uh... Oh, man, that is so true. That is basically Dante's Inferno. I've never read Paradise Lost, but I have read Dante's Inferno. And yes, essentially, it is like Dante Alighieri's self-insert into, well, I wow. guess the afterlife. You, you said the words self-insert right as control and delete said Dante's Inferno is a self-insert as well. You two are well synced. You have similar thoughts, and I love it. Um, I apologize to Cyber Surfer. I missed his joke. He he wants me to say "Slick Rick Riordan" to you. <laughs> slick Rick Riordan means something. Well, I don't know. Just Slick Rick, you know. Slick Rick. Slick okay. Rick. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, that was books. Do you want do you want to do one more category or Definitely. Are we good on that game? Definitely. Okay. This is I'm I'm entertained. I don't know about you guys, but Hey, yeah. We're seeing some great guesses. So we got uh movies, TV shows, and it's specifically live action TV shows and uh video games. Oh man. Um I did not and I still don't watch a lot of TV, but I do think that would be interesting as a category okay so let's try that all right tv let's uh let's hear your guesses chat as well what what are the most popular tv shows to make uh to make fan fiction about and um this is just live action so i gotta start off with star trek 
I'm a big Star Trek Next Generation fan. Uh, I would say that's probably in my top 10 all-time favorite visual media. Huh. Really enjoy um, that series. I am not seeing this on my list. I wonder if they split it up into, into multiple different categories. Is yeah. Stargate is not related to Star Trek, right? No. Am I going to make a bunch of enemies by asking that? <laughs> We're all friends here, right? We are. It's a safe space. Um, yeah, not seeing Star Trek. Wow. Okay. Um, okay, so there's like a million different uh, NCIS TV shows, which is like mm -hmm. a true crime. It's not really true crime, but it's like a crime drama TV series. So that would be another guess because that was pretty big and still is pretty big from what I understand. Hey, yeah, nice. That is number six. I've never watched an episode of NCIS. Oh, I was surprised I. by that one. But uh, okay, we got some good guesses in the chat. Let me uh, read this. Wow, lots of good guesses in the chat. Um, we got Doctor Who. We got X Files, oh, Supernatural, yeah. Once Upon a Time, Adventure Time, Parks and Rec, Lost, Once Upon a Time, Sherlock, with <laughs> Benham Kimber Burnett. <laughs> Gilligan's Island, Land of the Lost, Junior Puffin stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no. Up stuff now. No, not and Puffin 24. stuff, please. Okay. I'm going to have to go back and forth to cross-check this with my list. So, okay. Um, Doctor Who, yes, that is number three. Once Upon a Time, yes, that is number five. Supernatural. Did someone say Supernatural? Yes, that is number one. Okay. Wow, Jared, I'm sorry. The the chat swept you. That's, got no... That is totally <laughs> fine. Chat, I'm proud of you. Each of you, except for whoever typed HR Puffin stuff. You, I'm not proud of. Uh, Teletubbies has some fix, I bet. It says control and delete. I don't want to know if they do. <laughs> um, okay, wow. Yeah, great, great guesses. Okay, so... I'm just going to have to read the list. So we've got Supernatural is number one, Glee, Doctor Who, Sherlock, as I think someone guessed that, mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, NCIS, we already said, Vampire Diaries. I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not either, but I, I, think, I think that's a Netflix one, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, interesting. And then we've got Criminal Minds and Stargate. SG-1 specifically. I'm surprised Stranger Things isn't on that list. I feel like... Yeah, so I think that's probably because of the um, the time... Oh, yeah, true. Um, like how, how fan fiction was popular before. The website fanfiction.net was popular before Stranger Things was. So I bet if we checked on AO3, it would have a lot more. <laughs> Paparma says, bad lip reading version of High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh. Okay, well, since we've come this far, I feel like we have to do video games just because I, I kind of need to know what sad, lonely gamers like me are writing themselves into. <laughs> All right. Um, I would say that once they've started writing themselves into games, they're they're happy gamers. That's true. All right, the category is video games. Which video games are people writing about? Um, Halo. I apologize ahead of time that um, like the what gets split up and what doesn't is might might not be super intuitive. Um, so there might be some overlap between these categories, or there might be some that aren't as high on the list as you would think because they got split up more than you would think. Um, but you said Halo. Yes. Um, in the chat, we've got Doom, Metal Gear, Zelda, Final Fantasy, Elder Scrolls, Lego Star Wars, Stardew, and another Halo. I feel like, so Final Fantasy is an interesting guess because that's one of those Japanese RPG, JRPG games that has like a billion different games in the franchise. And also has quite a complicated storyline. I've never played one, but if if the <laughs> if the trope is to be believed, so I feel like you could expand on just JRPGs and have reasonable success rate. So I'm going to say Chrono Trigger might be on the top ten list. 
Mm. So that's another one that's pretty well liked. I'm not seeing that one. Okay. Have have any of these been right? Um, okay, some of the chat chat guesses have been. Okay, right? but not yeah. Halo. Um, not Halo. Interesting. Okay. Uh. So let's see. We we heard a guess for Zelda. That is number five. Yeah. Good one there. That's a big franchise. Um. Megan said Final Fantasy. That is number four. Kingdom Hearts and Pokemon. Cyber Surfer guessed both of those. Those are both on the list. Pokemon. Oh, that's number one and two. Wow, Cyber wow. Surfer. Congrats. Thanks. Impressive. Pokemon I forgot about, but yeah, that has huge potential because of the, again, the RPG format. Like, you could probably do a Skyrim fan fiction pretty easily as as well because you are the main character it's not like a book franchise where there's already a main character to work around yeah yeah someone in the chat guessed elder scrolls and that was like top 20 or something like that um not top 10 though what else so what what do we have creed assassin's Um, creed okay uh, that is a great guess. Uh, that that was also a, like on the top twenty or thirty. I was surprised that one wasn't higher because there's lots of games and lots of lore to draw on. But uh, yeah, that one did not make top ten. Um, do haunted Pokemon carts creepy pasta account as uh, fanfics? Um, not on fanfiction.net. All original content there. No one has ever copy pasted something. <laughs> Guaranteed. Actually, I've got a funny story about that. So as part of my thesis, I studied um, or I did like big data analysis on some fan fiction stories. And the first thing I did was I made a word cloud of the words that were used with um, each canon, like each original piece of media. And I believe it was with the Bible. When I made a word cloud of the fan fictions about it, the two biggest words were big and chungus. <laughs> And I was like, what is going on? Do fan fiction users call God Big Chungus? Like, is this a character that's commonly used? Nope. There was just one story in the Bible category that was just the words Big Chungus repeated about 5,000 times. Wow. That dominated my word cloud. So uh, I lied. There is definitely some copy pasta going on on fan fiction. Got a guess for Red Dead Redemption 2. Um Sorry, I'm keeping people in too much suspense. Are you are you ready for the list? I have one more guess. Okay. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was a pretty Great popular guess. RPG back in the day. Not on the list. Okay. All right. Well, that that's um, all my guesses. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. This 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 was a hard one. Um. So we've got Pokemon, Kingdom Hearts, Sonic the Hedgehog is number three. Um, Final Fantasy, Legend of Zelda, Dragon Age, Mass Effect. Fire Emblem, Super Smash Brothers, and Resident Evil. Top 10 most common. Super most Smash popular. Brothers. That's not a game with a lot of storyline, if I remember my youth playing Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, so I th- I think that one of the things that makes a piece of media good for fan fiction is just having a lot of characters. Mm. Um, because then you've got all these personalities to draw from, lots of different scenarios you can imagine them in. Um just for example, there's a common like fan fiction trope where you just take characters from some media and put them in a hotel room together and just imagine like what they're doing. Not in a sexual way, just like, well, sometimes in a sexual way, mostly in like a friendship way. <laughs> um, like if uh, R2-D2 and Maz from uh, Star Wars were stuck together, like what would they talk about and what shenanigans would they get up to? Yeah. So... Um, Super Smash Bros. has a ton of characters and uh, yeah, just lots of different situations you could put those people in. Is my hypothesis. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense and it also makes it a little bit easier from an imagination standpoint. Like you don't have to create a whole lot from scratch. Yeah. 
Yeah, so there's definitely people that look down on fan fiction because it's like not as artistic or not as creative. Um, I disagree with that. I think, like at the very least, it's a great way to practice writing and um, get better at it. Mm -hmm. It's also just like a really beautiful way to express your appreciation for a piece of media. Like you could either buy a t-shirt with those characters on it or you could write a story. And I think one of those involves a lot more passion and Emotional care. Emotional investment, and, for sure. Mm -hmm, and like contributes to the community and... Uh, helps other people be excited about the things you're excited about. Uh, control and delete says Sonic fix are cursed and are single-handedly responsible for all modern world conflicts. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Glad we were able to pin that down. Oh, cutscene time. Evelyn's here. You walked all the way out here, Evelyn. It looks better than you remember. That's definitely not true. <laughs> Unless you're hoping it become a nature preserve. We have not cared for this farm as well as Grandpa did, except the greenhouse. That is better. A gift from one gardener to another. It, it looks like a pot. Yep. Yeah, we now nice. have a garden pot. Cool. Yeah, I think that's probably what Scamble and Pabarma were talking about earlier. Okay, um, I've got one other video game fanfiction to call out. Someone actually mentioned this one in the chat, but there are 141 fanfictions about the game Tetris. <laughs> which, you know, kind of ruins my earlier theory that you need characters to have fanfiction. But there's only 141 of them, so... Uh, uh, I don't know, man. If you can anthropomorphize Tetrominoes, then you've got... I don't know. Control, delete. How many Tetrominoes are there? Eight, maybe six. I don't know. You've got square piece, S piece, Z piece, T piece, line piece, it's L and reverse L. Seven. Hmm. Um. Yes, yeah, seven. Nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not a bad cast. Yeah, I guess not. Um, just have to give them personalities. Yeah. I, I just looked at the clock. It's it's that time of day again, which is nuts. Oh, are we? Wow. Time flies when you're talking about fan fiction. <laughs> I never um, thought I'd cool. say it. Should we call it there then? Yeah. Yeah. If that if that works, I'm yeah. trying to think. What did we achieve? We we planted. A bunch and we fished a bunch and made a lot of money because the next step is to prepare for launching beyond just the community center but moving towards perfection yeah yeah sorry it wasn't a super eventful stream thanks everyone for participating in the chat uh that that was fun chat with fan fiction about everyone with everyone um but yeah we'll we'll do some research offline and figure out what the next best steps are for uh for working towards perfection and in the meantime we'll just keep inching closer to the community center um if you yeah, want to no... keep chatting with us about fan fiction or this game or a lot of other things that we're interested in you can follow us on instagram and you can follow us on youtube if you missed part of today's stream or you're interested in our backlog um in the about channel or the about section of our twitch stream you should be able to find our link tree and that'll take you where you need to go. Yep. Thanks everyone for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.